Hey guys, so frequent watchers of my channel and thank you everybody who subscribed. Just been doing this tech stuff for about a month and a half now, already closing in on 3,700 subscribers last time I checked. I'm blown away. I didn't think anybody would be watching my stuff this fast. Anyway, the point is, you know that usually I don't have this like awful looking background behind me. And so what's up with that? What's going on here? Um, well, I'm gonna be having to work from home for the next couple of weeks. The uh, case count pa uh, pandemic wise is apparently rising in my county and my school. Um, I'm a high school math teacher. I've been teaching online, but they've been making us teach from the classroom. Well, now they're asking us to teach from our homes, if at all possible, uh, because the case counts are going up. Now, in my classroom, I'd built a green screen out of meter sticks and butcher paper. Well, that's not very portable. So now in my home, uh, if I'm gonna be teaching here at my desktop computer and, and uh, all that, then I don't have my green screen. And I usually teach with my green screen. So I can have all my math stuff behind me going in through OBS into my Zoom call. And I also do that on my YouTube videos. So now what I need to do is figure out how I can live without a green screen. Well, I was hoping my RTX card could help me out here. So there's the NVIDIA Broadcast app. Now, I think a lot of NVIDIA owners don't really know that this is here. And I had never used it myself, although I was aware it existed. It has a couple of cool things. It has microphone noise removal, which we will test out in this video, but I wanna start with the green screen because that was my main thing I was focused on. Now, it also can remove noise from an output source. So like if somebody had like a clicky keyboard or something like that, but again, that's not my main thing. I'm interested in the camera feature and specifically, I'm hoping that I can hit background replacement and save my, my, myself some money on a green screen or some time on making one. Let's click the button and see what happens. Okay, well, as you can see, it's doing a green screen effect but um, I did test this out briefly already, and as you can see, it does not like my chair, <laughs> right? It does not like my chair. It's fairly effective though, right? This is pretty good. Um, I could see myself using this in my classroom just fine. Um, but for my YouTube videos, I, I, I don't want these flickering on and off, and honestly, even in my classes, that could be a bit of an issue. Now, I let me see, is it? If more of my chair was displayed, I think it has an easier time figuring out what it is. Now, if I go way over here, it's still having some issues. Um, but that seems to be working better. So like, <laughs> I think if it has more of it to look at, it has a better idea telling what it is. Um, whereas if I'm up like this, you can see, I think it might be having trouble telling if that's like background or if it's hair or if it's a chair and it can't make up its mind. So I could change out my chair and hope that solves the problem, uh, or I could actually get a green screen. Sorry, I'm not always looking at you guys, but I'm looking at the green screen effect uh, to make sure I'm talking about what makes sense here. Uh, yes, I don't know. It, it, it's reasonably okay. Now let's compare it to an actual green screen because I did order a green screen um, and I tested this out and I was having these chair issues, so I let the green screen order uh, go through. It actually just arrived uh, an hour ago and my daughter helped uh, uh, unbox it and all that. So no unboxing video here. I might do a review of the green screen though. Uh, so let me actually uh, open that up real quick. So um, basically it's a fold out one. Like, I mean, it's like, it's like a pull up thing. Okay. Well, there's definitely a trick to uh, getting around that, but as you can see, it's not super wide, so I have to get it as close to me as possible. Now, you'll also notice that it's it's cutting off the, the edges here, right? Um, well, we can adjust that. So now we're gonna compare this to using an actual actual green screen. But actually, you know what? Let's try using the background replacement with a green screen and see if that solves the issue. Ah, uh, so I, uh, basically what I was hoping here is that giving it a more solid background would make the AI have a, I think this is through AI, right? Their AI cores or whatever. The point is I was hoping we'd give it an easier time now by giving it a solid background to compare to, but it seems like whatever's going on with it, it's still, yeah, it's just that height of my chair. Sometimes when I turn over to the edge, but yeah, it, it seems like just having that little bit by my shoulders um, bugs it. 
And it seems like replacing the background uh, with an actual green screen didn't completely solve the issue. Now I want to show you guys a comparison to actually using a green screen live through OBS. Now to be clear, in a uh, if you were doing a green screen edit uh, in post-processing, so in your editing software, you could have a lot more control over the green screen effect. Um, but in OBS, we still have some effects. So I'm going to go to my NVIDIA broadcast source. Here, let me slide this over so you guys can see what I'm doing. Um, so I'm going to go to the NVIDIA broadcast source. And, well, by the way, one nice thing with the, with the background replacement tool was that I didn't have to worry about the edges of my green screen not being big enough. But I'll show you guys how we can deal with that. But anyway, uh, so we're going to go here. And I guess I need to right click on it, go to filters. We're going to add a filter. Specifically, we're going to add a chroma key. All right, we've added a chroma key. And it defaults to green. And now you guys can see the effects of that. This is just completely default settings without playing with it at all. Now, I will say that one thing that I've done is I have added a little bit of lighting to the back of my green screen. And if I added more lighting, it would do even better. Because when there's differences of shadow quality on the green screen, it has a bit of an effect. Also, this blue shirt uh, might you know, be reflecting the green a little bit more than we would like. Uh, so you can see that even the, the actual green screen in OBS with just default settings isn't perfect. Now you can play with those settings a bit and try to clean it up. But this point in this video isn't teaching you how to use chroma key in OBS. But it's showing you if, if you're comparing the simplicity of just clicking a button and seeing if it works, here is purchasing a green screen, clicking a button in OBS, just turning on a chroma key default green. Here's what it looks like. And then I showed you what it looked like using the NVIDIA tool. Now, um, uh, by the way, like I, uh, this wouldn't be that simple because now my green screen's not big enough, right? But you can easily add in some filters uh, where you can just add a crop filter. And that's, again, not really the point of this video. But just so you guys know, if you are watching this, you like crop in uh, a bit on the left and the right. And maybe a little bit more on the right. And like I said, so I could play around with this a bit more, but you guys get the idea. And I could, I could move, move that stuff out of the way. The point is, uh, well, the point isn't that I wanted to teach you how to use a green screen in OBS, but we just wanted to compare the two. And again, you could play around with the, um, with the exact filters a bit. I'm going to remove the crop, and we're going to go back to the actual. Um, we're going to re remove the chroma key. All right, back to this, and let's look at the uh, NVIDIA background replacement one more time. So here's the background replacement when it has a um, when it has the green screen to give it a high contrast background to work with. And then let me pull the uh, pull the screen down one more time. So I'll show you guys what I'm doing there. All right, so now no green screen behind me. And there's the background effect. Uh, one nice thing is I'm not getting the like green halo that I get on things by having that green screen there, um, which can be annoying to try to deal with. But as you can see, the edges are just choppy, you know? Uh, and I, and I, th I find the pop-in a little bit more distracting using this than I find it using the, um, the chroma key. So it has its place, I think. Um, you can decide if this is good enough for your purposes, how professional you want things to look. And I'm probably going to use the chroma key and uh, play around with the settings with the chroma key to get it looking pretty nice. Now, you probably just heard a heater kick on, which is great transition to our next video. So because I'm working at home, I have a noisy heater in my basement set up here. Now, I'll leave the, uh, the uh, effect on here for the video, just so you guys can look at that. Now, let's turn on noise removal. So listen, do you hear the heater? Do you hear the heater now? I can't hear what you guys are hearing right now because this is recording and I'd have to play it back. But I have done this test before with the heater, and I was actually extremely impressed with its removal of the heater and how well my voice still sounded. Now, with other types of sounds is where I found it still pretty good, but maybe not good enough to use in like a YouTube recording. But this isn't the type of thing I do in a YouTube recording. Specifically, what I'm talking about is I have a really loud mechanical keyboard, OK? Um, and let me, let me turn off the noise removal. 
And let me just type some nonsense in the search bar here. So you can hear I've got a pretty loud mechanical keyboard. So if I was playing a game like, let's go WASD a bunch, right? WASD, WASD, right? All, all of that. Um, that might be how it's sounding if I'm, you know, stutter stepping in, in CSGO or something. Whatever. The point is, um, if you're a streamer, that might be an issue for you. You might have a mechanical keyboard. You might want to remove it. So now, let's kick on the noise removal. Okay, so noise removal is activated. And let's clear this. And so you guys can see I'm actually doing this again. So ADAD, WASD. And as I'm talking, I'm going to try to keep talking while I do this. And now I'm going to start really hitting it loud. I'm going to start really clicking loud. Okay, really going loud now. So um, I'm going to stop now. So I'm done doing that. And I will once again turn off the noise removal. Uh, so noise removal is off. We'll run that through again. Here's kind of quietly clicking, more like how I'd actually use it. Here's exaggerated clicking, like I was doing at the end there. Okay, so I don't know how exactly that sounded on this particular recording, but I have done that test before. And I was, you know, I was impressed at how well it removed the sound, but I felt like on especially the loud clicks, you could hear a degradation in my audio quality and some little pieces of the clicks were still getting through. So that was my assessment on my recording I did listen to and you guys could be the judge of the one I just recorded. Uh, my personal thought is, um, it could have some serious advantages, especially removing this heater noise and things like that. Um, but yeah, on those louder clicks, you just have to decide if, if you're willing to suffer with the degradation to the audio quality versus removing the background noise and what particular application you're looking at. I think in like a Discord call or something, this could be fantastic for uh, if you're annoying people with an open mic setting and a mechanical keyboard. I think in terms of live streaming, you're gonna have to make that call for yourself and run some tests and see what you think. And in terms of like a professional video or something like that, I think you should just be careful about not having background noises during the video rather than risk uh, degrading the audio quality during the filming. Now, if I'm filming, filming videos at home and the heater pops on or something, this could be useful. Uh, but yeah, for the louder, more sudden staccato sounds, uh, maybe not as much. All right, that's pretty much that. Let me run through here to see if there's anything else I wanted to show you. Uh, that's all it can do on the microphones. It can do the same thing to audio outputs. I'm not going to really test that in this video. Um, and then on cameras, uh, there are some things besides background replacement, so we could just take a quick look. So background blur is doing the same thing. So background blur blurs your background, and you can adjust the strength, like there's a full strength blur. So there's that, if you want to blur out your black background for either a stylistic reason. But um, you'll notice that anything it was having issues with uh, for the background removal, it can also have issues with here. So it can still have some issues with my chair deciding whether or not to blur that. So depending on your particular settings, that could have an effect. Uh, let's remove that. The other one is auto frame. So auto frame, I believe, is going to zoom in on me and then follow my face. Now, I can't think of anything I'd use that for personally, but maybe you can. By the way, my heater's annoying. Let's, let's kick on the noise removal for the end of this video. Uh, so again, kicked on the noise removal for the end of the video, just in case you want to listen for that, and it'll filter out the heater noise, right? Maybe it's an improvement to the video. All right, so that's the auto frame, and you can adjust the zoom levels, but whatever. Uh, let's turn that off. And the last thing is just a background replacement instead of removal. That's where if you wanted, uh, you're not running like OBS or something to put something behind you, uh, but you just wanted to put a static image. So you could select a specific image or pre-recorded video to replace, uh, to add into the background behind you. But that's not going to let you do like a desktop capture or anything like that, like you might be wanting to do or like a game capture or something. You'd have to combine that with other software to make that happen. All right, that's what I've got for you today, guys. You can be the judge of if this would meet your needs. And um, personally, I think I'm going to play around more with the chroma key. Hope you guys have an excellent day.